Well, hello everybody and welcome to the farm here with the Stovers. This is a uh, really a, a real-time look at us tearing down uh, these trees and building the new area for the bunker silos and the uh, the farmyard. I'm just going to go through it, really, and, and do it the way uh, I, I, I build. I'm just really going to go through it and, and build the way I do in the game editor. Uh, I do have the HUD on. I've got everything opened. I also have auto save on, so you're going to hear that ding every now and again. That's a really nice mod uh, that you can add if you want to save your game at, at an increased interval. Uh, I, I've really been saved by that where I haven't had a crash that has destroyed some of my game files. It's just nice to know it's going to save automatically every 5 or 10 minutes. You'll see that pop up. There is uh, one way to really delete trees quickly. You can certainly get out your chainsaw. And if you want to cut them, you can. Just, you know, pop it out. Let them fall. I just dropped that on their Volvo. I'm sure the contractor's going to love that. And, and you can rinse and repeat this process. But there's probably 50 trees in here, and that would take forever because now you'd have to strip all these leaves you would then have to come in here and destroy the stump because if you don't get rid of the stump it's not going to allow you to build anything on your property there are some mods out there to really go in and, and delete uh, trees quickly you can also buy equipment that delete trees quickly but the fastest way to do it is to use easy dev control and we're going to open that and we're going to come to the delete object input it's right here in the main settings of Easy Dev Controls, so we're going to turn that on. Now, I have changed the key binding, so the button that actually activates the deletion of the objects, to my index finger on my mouse, so my left mouse button. You can do that uh, through the uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, folder. You can change that. Now watch what happens. With that on, I just walk up to a tree, and it goes away. And you walk up to another one, and it's gone. And if you get really good at this, you can just start walking around and deleting trees at an extremely fast pace. You will note that you can't delete it by clicking around it. You've got to walk up to it, put your, your cursor or your bullseye on the tree, you'll see... If you've got the window open in the lower right hand corner, the item or the object will pop up, then you can delete it. I've run into a few minor issues with some of these bushes. Uh, some of these more bushy type trees, you've kind of got to search around for the trigger. Uh, but once you find it, again right there, so that popped up, you can see the description on the lower right hand corner of the screen. Now it's gone. So what would probably take hours of time, realistically, is now going to take minutes of getting all these trees cut down. So I'm just going to run around, start cutting.
So I didn't time that, but uh, that was probably less than, I don't know, five minutes to, to take down all those trees. Would have taken hours uh, to do it properly. And if you want to role play, absolutely, that, that's fun. Uh, but for this particular build, I just wanted to get them chopped down. You'll see the edge of the map over here. This gets really tricky as you're building in some of these maps because there are times where you can't get over there and you've actually got to shift your view uh, to be able to place items uh, over towards the, the very, very edge of the map. I also like to leave a few trees at the edge of the map just to you know give it a little more realism. I might even add some more back in over there. Uh, but then I'm going to leave a few here by the homestead because that just looks nice. Now we got to take care of the ground, and you can actually see it's surprisingly got some changes in elevation, where it just seems like a flat forest is really pretty bumpy. Uh, very, very fast way to do this uh, and, and get rid of both the placeable uh, vegetation as well as the vegetation that is pre-built into the map, and I'm so sorry. I don't know exactly what that term is. Oh, and look at this. I do see a... I believe there might be a collectible over here. Let's go over and run and get that. I can't leave that there. Where'd that go? And you actually don't want to leave it there because it would... There it is. Uh, it would hinder your ability to place something there. There could be more. I don't know. Let me just take a look. I don't see any more. But we could find some. Who knows? Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in. I'm going to grab the, <clears throat> excuse me, and the landscaping tool. I'm going to plant some grass or just paint on some grass. And what this is going to do is it's going to help get rid of all of the vegetation that is there. Just being... You know, cognizant of not getting over on the road. There are going to be a few things that we can't get rid of. Uh, just the way the map makers made the map. And that's okay. We just work around it. This tree that's fallen across the road, that's built into the map. We're not going to get rid of that. No big deal. But by painting all of this grass on, I've now very quickly, very easily eliminated all of that ground clutter. And it's now nice and flat. It also got rid of the uh, the non-placeable ground clutter that was that was added by the map maker, so that's nice too. I don't think that's going to let me delete that anymore, so we'll just throw that over there in the beans. Uh, and I might have to chop this down since I've already cut it. And if you've cut a tree, you can just walk up over the stump if you've got um, Lumberjack mod installed. I've actually taken my Lumberjack mod out or off because I've got easy dev controls. It's really your preference in playing. Um, I don't know if I can... Yep, I can just click on it and delete it and that's good. Let's go over here and get this tree. That's gone. Now, this, this is going to have to stay. So we'll just find a way to make that part of the map. Uh, I believe these can be moved. Maybe not. It looks like the cones can be moved. So, But again, we're just still going to make this part of the map because, hey, let's not forget, we got to do drag racing here. We got a quarter mile all put out on this, this road. We don't want traffic coming down here, so this is this is our road. I need to make a decision now on how I want the elevation to to flow. Uh, on the main farm over here, I I intentionally put this this valley because I just I thought it was kind of pretty, you know, having this uh, not flat farm. Uh, that you would typically see in like the Midwest United States. It's, it's just it's a little more condensed and it, it's actually kind of pretty. Just unfortunately doesn't give, or I said, unfortunately it doesn't give you a ton of room. So what do we do over here? 
I want to put some bunkers in, and I want to potentially put in uh, a little bit more uh, shed storage. Potentially even a grain cider, a grain dryer, because, again, we've got corn, a corn dryer. Uh, and my silos, while, you know, they would work, uh, they're, they're just not that big. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to flatten this terrain off, uh, so that it actually is built up a little here. It's going to be higher than the road because I want to get it flat. Uh, so that the, the bunkers can go in there properly. And I think then we'll have the entrance uh, off the fields. We'll, we'll be right here. Got to be cognizant of these these uh, power poles. Probably bring it in around here, and that should work just fine. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to go into the landscaping tool. I'm going to come into the uh, sculpting tool, and I'm going to go to the leveler. And I realistically want to have my grade for this particular area at or about the same level as the uh, the driveway in. So in the game engine or the game uh, builder you just click the area you want uh, the ground to be at and then once you move continuing to hold down the mouse button it goes and builds up the terrain for you. This is also very expensive. You can see my uh, bank account going down quite quickly. Probably not going to count this in our 2.5 million. We're going to go to the investor for this and get any extra money that we need. Uh, this is this is uh, an example of what I was talking about when you get up to the edge of the map and you just cannot, uh, you can't go any further. So I'm using my left and right directional controls and I, I just hit a stopping point right here. I can't go any further. You can still paint the map though. You just kind of have to widen out your angle of view and then you can go over to the area. I've got a pretty soft brush here um, because I, I don't want it it is harsh, but I, I don't really want that. I think I'll probably come back in here and soften it out. But I want to make it so that the road uh, is slopes down and away from uh, this area of the farm that I'm building. And I'm going to go right up to the edge of the map right there. And this is all your preference. This is the beauty of this game. It's one of the reasons why it's so successful. And I really love it. it. It's, you know, I grew up on Sim City uh, when I was younger. I remember, uh, like one of the first computers that I got. Uh, it was a compact. I think it was called a CD TV. It was like a CRT computer. It had a CD-ROM drive on it. It also had an RF uh, connector in the back that you could plug your cable television into. And it was pretty cool. It was really expensive. We bought it from a place that. It, no longer in business. I believe it was called... Um, oh, I don't even remember. It's on the top of my, my head. If I remember it, I'll, I'll make a mention of it. But it was local to the Indiana area. I just remember it being very, very expensive. Uh, and now it's you know a paperweight somewhere in a junkyard. So this is flat now. But you can see there... It, it, it's not pretty. And it, it's not realistic, so or maybe it is realistic if you brought dirt in. So I'm gonna sm I'm gonna smooth, uh, soften this area just a little bit, just to make it a little more believable. Here's an example of where you've uh, increased the terrain level and you've actually captured some trees in it. Uh, you can still delete those. We'll probably do that last, just it looks weird.
the raised lower tool is kind of fun. I mean, maybe we'll like come in here and make a like a potential walkway up from the back of this area down by the road. And it looks really bad right now. But what I'll do then is, so I dropped it down. I'll bring in the softening tool now, and we'll just soften that up. You could also use the slope tool, which would have made it a perfect slope, but. Eh, we just consider this area not perfect and do it this way. It has no depth to it right now, but once we add the paintable textures and the, the paintable uh, grass and ground, that will have a little bit more depth to it. So this is not terrible. Pretty happy with that. Um, I do want to go in now. So we painted grass to begin with, and I did that to get rid of all of the vegetation, including the vegetation that was added by the mod maker, or the map maker. I'm now going to go in and I'm going to paint on uh, the paintable grass, so the flat, non-3D uh, grass. Because I like to just build with a green um, base. And many times I also then go back in and do add grass because it is easier to um, place your items and then touch it up. At least I feel this way than to have all dirt and then go in and paint grass uh, around your items. Just this gives a nice blanket, kind of like a base coat uh, for your for your build. This is what we want the ground to look like, and I'm going to just kind of go right up to the edge of that, right up to the edge of that road. I'll probably put some more placeables down over there just to make it seem and feel more realistic. So there is our base layer of paintable flat grass. I'm now going to come in here to the plants section, and I'm going to grab my... Uh, let's see here. This looks to be long grass, not meadow grass. So it's long meadow grass. I love, really, really kudos to map makers uh, and to modders that provide um, more vegetation, more paintable items. I really, really appreciate it. It's uh, so nice to be able to, to take the base game uh, products and have those, but then, you know, make it kind of your own. Uh, if we had just used the base game um, grass, we would have had all these, you know, other uh, <laughs> pieces of weeds and flowers. Uh, but this map maker has given us a couple of, of, of heights of grass. One being medium grass, this other being, uh, you know, a real short grass. And there are ways that you can go in and, and add these yourself to maps. I'll be candid, I am not uh, well-versed in ma uh, map making or mod making. Um, I've also found that my system, there's the save I was talking about. I've got the automatic save feature set up. There is a mod for that. Really, really nice because you just don't have to think about it. Uh, it saves for you. I think I've got the interval set up every 10 minutes. Might be every 5 minutes. Uh, you can change that. Like I was mentioning, I I know you can go in and modify XML files. I found that I'm running a Mac. The zip compression of Mac, for whatever reason, the game, so FarmSim22 just doesn't like the compressed files. So I've I've taken some some modded items and tried to increase like their speed or their capacity or their you know, fuel consumption rate, and you know, I, I can pretty well follow along a tutorial online. But then when I get to saving it and bringing it back in the game, it just does not work for me. And I really just kind of attribute that to the, the differences between Mac and, and Windows. Or maybe there is an application that I should be using and I'm not. Uh, but long story short, I'm just, I'm not well versed in map or mod creation. I leave that to the experts. Alright, so there's our 
There's our flattened trees removed. We've got the base layer of grass. We've then got the 3D paintable grass on top of it. Uh, and now we can kind of go in here and start, you know, adding uh, some things. You know, I might kind of like a walkway over here that comes down. You might come up to the yard this way if you're, uh, you know, over visiting the cows. I like that. That's kind of nice. Paint a little happy tree. Happy cloud. This is a little happy walkway. It is happy, though. There we go. I like that. I, lo I love farms that have this type of just rolling elevation. I think it's really, really pretty. Um, not that a flat farm is, is boring. Um, I just kind of like rolling hills. All right, so that would be the walk up. Uh, I also feel like, you know, there would probably be this area of, of nicer grass and then along this hill by the road potentially some um, less healthy grass. So the thing I like to do, I like to come in here with like the dirt tool and the smallest uh, paintbrush I can and I just kind of click and move. Just click and move the cursor, and what that does is it, it just adds a little bit of depth to the areas. Takes out some of that grass, and you can change the you know the type of, of paint you're using. And it just makes it seem like it's a little bit less uh, maintained grass maybe something that you would see along the side of the road versus this beautifully manicured yard. And then you can go in certainly and add add your plants if you want to just kind of scatter them out and around. Choose different sizes here. And I mean, you gotta have some flowers. Put some flowers out there too. And I don't know what we're gonna do about this. We we may we'll figure something out here. Okay. And the nice thing is about this: if 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 you do uh, put something down that you don't like, you can just grab grass and paint right back over it. Every now and again I get a little too overzealous with this and I have too many uh, pieces of vegetation. But I kind of like that. That's not, t it's not terrible. Um, probably would go in here then. And I think we can start, we can drop where we're going to put these bunker silos. So I'm going to come in here to buildings silos and we're going to find a bunker silo that we like. I don't have enough money for that so stand by. Let's go ahead and let it save. <clears throat> so we'll put a silo in. Let's find a silo that we like. Um, these are the Maze Plus silos. These are nice. I like these because they, they I know they work really well with the Maze Plus um, mod. Uh, those would be good. They're uh, I don't know the exact size of them. Um, that would work. So I think. So I think again, we want that we want to be able to come in and we want to. You know, I, I I don't think I'd want them turned like this. Because realistically, if you built up too much, it could collapse in the back, and then it'd be very difficult to get behind the, the silo. Um, so I think we'll turn it, not like that, like this, and let's just drop a couple in here. I think we're going to put three down, just three. So again, you could come in and this is where you could easily back in and, and fill up your, your bunker. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of fencing. We'll 
keep with the theme. I'm going to run this fence right along the, uh, the area between the nice grass and the grass we kind of destroyed to make it look a little more realistic. And some ask, like, why are you doing this first? Well, I, sometimes it's just easier to do this first. And I've already made a mistake, I can see here. That's probably not going to be big enough to get a big piece of equipment in there. So let's take this out. And let's wrap this around a little bit more like that. Okay, we're getting there. <clears throat> Now for the bunker areas, obviously it can't stay like this. It looks way too clean. So we're going to come in here and make it a little less tidy. I am also using paint and terraform anywhere, which allows you to um, do just that, paint and terraform anywhere. Without that mod installed, you would sometimes run into issues up against like roads or areas that you don't own, uh, not being able to do anything with them. I do want to get rid of the this stuff. Uh, and I'm probably going to run over here and jump in this equipment real fast. realized, what am I doing? I can just come in here and, well, walk up to it. I think I can make it go away. Well, let's sell it. Because we really don't need it here yet. Yeah, we got the investor. If we need another one, it's taken care of. There we go. And again, you're, you're going to see my screen uh, hitting save a lot. It saved me so many times just having that uh, that mod activated. I, I do believe it, it does slow down my game um, because I'll, I'll have the frames per second uh, up and I've noticed that right before it saves, there's a pretty significant drop in FPS. It saves. It goes from like 90 um, and I can even go in here and check this out. So pulling up the uh, dev console and I'm going to type in show FPS equals true. Actually, that's wrong. It's show FPS true. And there's your frames per second up there on the upper right. Um, currently running, you know, 65, 100. I might even keep that up for just a little bit so that you can see. Again, we're running a Mac Studio. 32 gigs of RAM, just the base Mac Studio, and I've got game settings uh, right around the, the high mark. Everything I think is high. I'm not running extra high, uh, and I do have the extended frame rate turned on. So we'll leave that up so you can see it, and maybe when we get the save screen pop up, you'll see it tank for like a second.
Again, just kind of sprinkling in some different textures. Some people you might like this, some people you might not. I like it. It just gives it a little bit of more of a used look. I might sprinkle in a little there too. It doesn't really matter. I, you know, candidly, at the end of the day, for, for making your own farms, it's up to you. It's whatever you like, whatever you enjoy. I just, this is what I like, and it seems to work. It is a little bumpy, so I might come in here to the smoothing tool and just soften this out a little bit. Okay, and then, I mean, there's always going to be, like, a little bit of animal mud. Just kind of a muddy area. And, I mean, who am I kidding? There's also, like, little areas of grass that pop up. Here we go. Does the frame FPS crash? No, it didn't that time. Hmm. Maybe there's something else that goes on. But yeah, I usually get some really good FPS and then just every now and again get a crash. Not a crash, but, you know, a, a big drop. Might have gone a little overboard there on some of that. It's kind of... Okay, that's not bad. I like that. Now, I do want to put some trees over here. Just to make it feel a little more like there's... Do we go big? Maybe we, we go bigger and we pretend we just didn't take them down. This is what I was talking about when I say I, I might go back in and add some items... And I might come back here along this back area. Let's put some oaks in back there. Uh, right mouse button, you can rotate your trees. I, I always like to see, you know, trees that are dropped down and aren't all facing the same direction. Just kind of nice. And then also with... And then also with the tree area, I go, typically go in and do some painting with forest ground and do the same thing that I did with that grass over by the road. Just because you're not going to have perfectly manicured grass under a tree. And you likely also have some bushes popping up here and there. Um, and then potentially some of these just to tuck in there. The nice thing about this map is the edge of the map has also got, I mean, there's a lot of trees over there. And it's, it's not just a white, you know, black hole. It's an oxymoron. It's not just a drop off. <laughs> Um, but if you still can kind of hide it, it you know, just feels a little bit more realistic. And I do realize adding trees can add stress to the game. I do have a mod that allows you to have more trees, so that is a plus. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. I like that. I really do. Again, we're not trying to do a lot here. We just needed a space so that we can get some silage cooking for our uh, for our cows.
this might extend up here. Now, this is going to get a little tricky here, because again, I can't really get down and see that. So I'm going to come into our decorations, get our fence, and I'm going to go ahead and put our fence down. I'm hoping this will work. Yes. So I'm going to put a little bit of a path in here. That you would, you know, follow... Should you want to come up that way? I guess you could almost drive up that way. It's it's wide enough. Maybe with the, the 4x4? Let's get up here to level ground. And then let's take this and just come straight back this way. and connect this to the homestead. Pretty happy with that. Uh, we could potentially maybe come in here and look for a building. Too cluttered. I don't mind this commodity shed. This could work. It's going to take out what we had already done with that walkway, but that's okay. Let's see if I drop this in here. Because we could store items in here. Uh, no issues. Okay, I got a little dirt we need to clean up. You know what we've got to do here, because this just doesn't doesn't look right. And the beautiful thing about this game is you can just do this. I 
think for the homestead, it would be nice to have this ice grass area out here for the kids to play. Or, you know, whomever we sell it to. is much 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 better I don't usually put anything along the, the uh, fields because it's just a nightmare when you're harvesting because you've got you know fencing in the way um, I guess we could maybe take it up to Like here, and possibly let it save. FPS? Nope, still good. Put maybe some rocks in here. There we go. I think that might actually do it for this first uh, rebuild of the farm. That's given us a lot more space. We could always come back in here and add uh, more drive drivable area if we needed to. We've got bunker silos. Uh, we've got a commodity shed. And we're cleaning up the old homestead. I feel like something's missing. Needs a couple trees in there. That's better. Well, there you have it, the newly completed commodity shed and bunker silos for the farm and the old homestead right across the street from the main farm. I think this is going to be a huge help as we get more animals and we get more silage or want to make more silage. You can get a little back entrance. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Come back again next time. we got a lot more to do on the farm with the Stovers.